Hello and welcome to this bite-sized video which is all about centralization versus decentralization. Now this is a perfect topic if you're studying for your E1 exam because the idea of centralization versus decentralization features heavily throughout the syllabus. But it's also a really useful refresher for those of you that are studying for your other E exams just to remind yourself what the differences are between these two concepts. Okay, this is a topic with two titles and we're going to turn our attention first to centralization. And centralization is simply when an organization's decisions are made by senior management or a centralized function rather than letting its divisional or lower level managers make the decisions. Let's put a computer logo on screen here because let's imagine that an organization's IT decision making was centralized it would mean that a single IT function would make all of the IT decisions for the entire organization and the divisional and lower level managers would only carry out the wishes of the centralized function rather than making the decisions themselves. So if we could imagine this in pictorial form, we're going to have our headquarters and then our arrows are going out each one of those arrows represents a division and the decisions are going to the divisions rather than being made at the divisions themselves. And there are a variety of advantages for an organization to use. Now we spoke earlier when we talked about divisional structures that one of the problems is that they find it difficult to communicate and there could be a replication of tasks because each division is working separately. Well, with a centralized function, each division is being managed and the decisions can be made centrally so that the organization knows that the decision making for each division is all aligned and the divisions are moving forward together in a coordinated way so that the organization hits its objectives. The next advantage is to do with reduced costs. And another disadvantage we spoke about earlier on was that there could be a duplication of tasks because divisions are acting independently and separately. Now, by an organization using centralization, although the divisions are still working independently, the centralized organization will be aware of what the different divisions are doing and so can make sure there's no duplication of tasks. For example, the centralized organization can bulk purchase. So maybe they would be able to negotiate deals for the IT, for the organization as a whole, rather than the separate divisions doing that and not getting such a good deal. The next advantage is that standardization ensures consistency of approach. So by a central function making a decision and then feeding it throughout the organization, the organization will have a set way of doing something and this will be passed down to every division so all the divisions will be acting in the same way. So there we go, that's centralization. That's what it is and there's the advantages for it. We're now going to turn our attention to decentralization and I'm guessing if you know what centralization is now, you can probably guess what decentralization is because quite simply it's when the authority is delegated downwards to the divisional managers or the lower level managers so that they can make their own decisions about their areas of the business while the head office can focus on strategic making decisions. So for example, in this system, if IT were delegated, local managers would make their own decisions about how much they used IT, what they purchased, who they're going to purchase it from. So we can see quite different from centralization where that would come from one IT function. Now we can see decentralization in a pictorial form. We can see we've got our headquarters, and now the headquarters would be where the strategic decisions were made, whereas in the other divisions, they are all making their own decisions. Okay, let's turn our attention now to the advantages. And the first advantage is that if decentralization system is used, it means the decision making is passed down to the divisions and the divisional managers can use their expertise to make appropriate decisions to suit the product or the customer or the local area. Because remember, earlier on in the video, when we talked about divisional splits, we said, well, divisions are really good 
because they can be used to focus on a specific product or a specific customer or a specific local area. So if we're thinking about an example, let's imagine we've got a big Brazilian multinational company and they've got an, a decentralized Indian division. Well, that manager of the Indian division is going to be making the choices for that division and they're probably in a better situation to judge or their customers need than a Brazilian based corporate office. So by using a decentralized approach, managers or divisions are able to use their expertise to make the best possible decisions. Another advantage for decentralization is that it's seen to be motivating for lower level managers. And this is quite simply because suddenly the lower level managers have more power and control in their own divisions and they're not just being told what to do by a centralized authority. And this allows them to tailor their division to maximize its own strengths. And by giving them the responsibility, managers will be more motivated to perform better. And that's similar to the next advantage, which is that it develops staff because the staff are able to take more responsibility locally. And what this does is also help the organization talent spot the successful managers and also means these staff already have decision making skills when eventually they're promoted to headquarters and they're suddenly making strategic decisions for the organization. Another advantage is that decentralization allows for quick decisions because power is delegated. Let's imagine we've got a Brazilian company again. We know we've got an Indian division. Let's imagine that an incident happens at the Indian division. The head of the division knows that action has to be taken. They take action and the incident is sorted. Well, in a centralized system, the incident would happen. The Indian division manager would have to report this to their head office in Brazil with also a suggestion of what the action should be. The Brazilian headquarters or Brazilian base would then read this information and then decide what to be done. And this would be fed back to the manager of the Indian division who could finally take action. And by then, of course, it may well be too late. And the final advantage is that by using decentralization, it means that senior management are able to concentrate on strategic long term issues because it's really difficult to focus on a 10 year plan what the company wants to be like in 10 years if they're constantly having to focus on day to day operational problems. OK, before we move on, we should just state that actually organizations don't have to pick centralization or decentralization. They can choose to have a mixture. For example, an organization may decide to centralize its IT because they think actually we want a standardized approach throughout all our divisions. We want to save money by bulk buying all our IT hardware. And we just think it makes much more sense than divisions being able to make decisions about IT. However, that organization may decide that local managers are best placed to do their own marketing because they know their customer base is so much better. And so they say, OK, we'll decentralize marketing, but keep IT centralized. And in this system, the organization is using the advantages of both systems to best suit their needs. OK, before we move on, we're going to have a look at a real world example of centralization and decentralization in action. And it involves the UK book chain Waterstones, which was opened by Tim Wardstone. And when it was, Tim Wardstone decided to use a decentralized model. So every branch in the national chain could make their own decisions about the stock, about their deals with suppliers, and was responsible for the branch's profit and loss. Well, eventually, Tim Wardstone sold his business to the HMV Media Group. Now, this group was specialist at selling music and video and they did this through large stores and they ran a centralized model and so when they acquired Waterstones they decided the Waterstones should move to a centralized model too. Now we know don't we what centralization it is. Now for HMV centralization meant the decisions were made at company headquarters and of course we know some of the advantages don't we for centralization. 
It meant that HMV would get cost benefits through economies of scale because suddenly instead of one branch of Woodstone's buying stock, HMV could buy stock for all of the branches, buying much more stock and so saving money. And it would also help with other inventorial things such as making sure the organisation doesn't overstock or have dead stock. Now, what this meant for Wardstones was that suddenly its managers who were used to high levels of autonomy suddenly had none and there was significant resistance to the change. And HMV also found that the level and the type of demand for books varied according to area and in fact it was managers who were best placed to make the decisions about the books that were stocked in their branches. Now eventually HMV divested Wardstones and now the organization runs with a degree of centralization as well as decentralization branch level autonomy. Now what I'm trying to show you with this example isn't that decentralization is right. There are lots of advantages to centralization but it's important that the right system is chosen for the industry that the organization is within. Well thank you very much for watching today's bite sized video. I hope it helps you with revision for your exams. If you need any more help don't hesitate to contact the Astranti site or just like this video if you want any more or subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you so much for watching today.